Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you Eva Chen's career journey. And this is something I'm really excited about because this is the first video in a series I'm calling How She Did It. And the goal of this series is to share with you female entrepreneurs and businesswomen's career paths to understand just how many versions there are of success and how non-linear it is. So if you're excited about this type of content, then definitely give this video a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss more videos in this series. On most days, Eva Chen's Instagram story is about 80 to 100 posts long, where you're just as likely to see a photo of her daughter's school lunch caption, Ren, please eat your lunch, as you are a private collection viewing with New York's most fashion elite. Eva's candid way of sharing online has garnered her over 1 million followers on Instagram and 49,000 and counting hashtags of the Eva Chen pose, where she shares a snapshot of her shoes and her bag in a cab on the way to work, where she happens to be the director of fashion partnerships on Instagram. Born to two immigrant parents who immigrated in the 70s to New York, Eva explains that she was quite bookish growing up. She was very shy, she liked to read, and she actually only got her braces off a year before college. And like many immigrant parents, she was encouraged to pursue a very stable career. And so she studied pre-med at Johns Hopkins. And while she was there, she studied really hard, but she says that at best, she was getting very average grades, but it was actually the classes where she could use her creativity that she really flourished in and excelled effortlessly. The summer before she was set to write the MCAT, she decided to take a break and apply for internships at locations she had never heard of. And one of those locations happened to be Harper's Bazaar. That was the internship she ended up taking, mostly because it was the only internship that paid. The first day of work was kind of really an eye-opening experience. It was just that light bulb going off over your head moment. I just kind of realized that there was more out there. There were people who loved words and loved to write and loved to craft these stories and tell stories to people as their career. Luck favors the bold is a response Eva once gave on Twitter to a follower's career question. And that certainly worked out for her in the magazine world. Eva describes her time at Harper's Bazaar as her dream life. But just as she was graduating in 2001, it was a post 9-11 New York. The economy was not great. And unfortunately, there were no jobs in the magazine industry. And Eva wondered if the universe was telling her, actually, this isn't for you. Reluctantly, she took a job as a paralegal. And just as she was about to apply for law school, her networking abilities kept her in touch with someone from the magazine world. And there happened to be a contract position opening up with Elle, which she took. And shortly after, that transitioned into a beauty assistant position. Eva would be promoted to a beauty editor, then later a associate editor, and she would stay with Elle for about three years. Next, she would transition to Teen Vogue, and that was a place she really loved. She really credits the editor-in-chief at the time as someone who really allowed her creativity to flourish, and that was key in making her time with Teen Vogue so special. And her husband and producer had a chance to have a really exciting work opportunity in California. She actually quit her job. And while she was there, she did a little bit of contract work with Vogue and other publications. And it was through that connection that Anna Wintour, Anna, be Anna would ask her to come back and consult on Lucky Magazine. Shortly after consulting on the magazine, Anna asked her to come on as the editor-in-chief. And not only was she the youngest, I believe, editor-in-chief of any Condé Nast publication, but also the first Asian American. While pregnant with her daughter, Ren, some decisions were made by Condé Nast to transition Lucky into somewhat of an e-commerce platform. That was something Eva wasn't really excited about. She loved fashion writing, she loved beauty writing, and that was really true to her. So after giving birth to her daughter, Ren, she decided to quit. I think it's really important to know that when your career has pivots or shifts, that's not a reflection on you and it's not a negative. Take it as a moment to see where you want to redirect your career. After her daughter was born, Eva was approached by Charles Porch, the head of global partnerships at Instagram. And while Eva was a beauty editor, she became known as the editor who kind of got Instagram. She would encourage a lot of very influential people like Carly Kloss to join the platform. Eva and Charles met over Mexican and margaritas. Charles had proposed to Eva the position of director of fashion partnerships. This is a very full circle career opportunity and something Eva 
I assume did not expect when she posted the first Eva Chen pose, hashtag five years ago. Since joining Instagram in 2015, Eva has worked with the fashion world, stylist, photographers, designers to better understand Instagram and to help Instagram understand the needs of the fashion world. Now a mom of two kids, Ren and Tao, she has fulfilled a lifelong dream of writing a book. She at 38 published her first book, Juno Valentine and the Magical Shoes, which became a New York Times bestseller, prompting a clothing collection with Janie and Jack, and has now gone on to write two more books, Juno Valentine and the Fashion Adventure, and A is for Awesome, 23 Women Who Changed the World. Eva's path proves that there is not one final success destination. I think what is so exciting and inspiring about Eva is how she didn't set out to be any one thing, but followed an inner voice and remained open. And that's what has led her to such a successful and full life. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will leave everything linked in the description box, all of the articles and podcasts I listened to to better understand her careers. Let me know any female entrepreneurs in the comments you would love to learn more about and subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you guys in the next video.